The clinical symptoms of vitamin B12 deficiency can be divided on symptoms that are caused by a low hemoglobin level, which are the common anemic symptoms that are the same for every anemia, and symptoms that are caused by low vitamin B12 level, which are the signature features of vitamin B12 deficiency anemia. First of all, to understand the pathogenesis of vitamin B12 deficiency symptoms, we have to recall why do we need vitamin B12. Recall that folate comes into the body in form of tetrahydrofolate, and tetrahydrofolate gets quickly methylated. In methylated form, tetrahydrofolate is basically inactive. In order to be activated, tetrahydrofolate have to lose this methyl group, and it's the moment when vitamin B12 comes into play. Folate gives methyl group to vitamin B12, and now free folate can be used for synthesis of DNA molecule. But vitamin B12 also do not like to be methylated. So vitamin B12 transfers this methyl group into homocysteine. This results in formation of methionin. So we need both folate and vitamin B12 for production of DNA molecule, which is the essential for mitosis of red blood cells. But also, unlike folate, we use vitamin B12 for the second reaction, and its conversion of methylmalonyl K to succinyl K. It's one of the most crucial reactions in the breakdown of odd chain fatty acids. So what happens with vitamin B12 deficiency is that without vitamin B12, folate cannot get rid of methyl group. So folate remains methylated and thereby inactive. Without free folate molecule, we cannot produce DNA. Without DNA, we cannot provide sufficient rate of cellular replications. And because red blood cells replicate by mitosis, mitosis rate decreases. With decrease in mitosis, first of all, the quantity of red blood cells decreases, and this will decrease hemoglobin concentration in the blood, thereby anemia develops. And also, less cellular divisions cause formation of a bigger cells. Thereby, anemia will be macrocytic, or so-called megaloblastic. So to explain this, recall that in hematopoiesis, less mature cells have bigger size. So basically, by cellular divisions, we make from one very big cell a few smaller cells. And for each replication, we require DNA molecule. So what happens in vitamin B12 deficiency or in folate deficiency is that the amount of DNA molecules decrease. With decrease in DNA, we cannot provide enough amount of cellular divisions. And as we see, with lesser cellular divisions, bigger cells are formed. Now, in one big cell, hemoglobin concentration, let's say 70. In a smaller cells, hemoglobin concentration is 50. And in most mature cells, hemoglobin concentration is 40. So total hemoglobin in most mature cells will be 160. In less mature cells, total hemoglobin level will be 100, which is anemia. So with lesser cell divisions, red blood cells inside them have bigger amount of hemoglobin. But their quantity is too small. Thereby total hemoglobin concentration will be low. Increase in red blood cell size we see in blood analysis as increase in MCV. Normal size of red blood cells gives MCV between 80 and 100. Macro size that are formed by one division less have MCV more than 100. So red blood cells that have bigger size we call macrocytes. And decrease in hemoglobin concentration we call anemia. Thereby this state we call macrocytic anemia. So vitamin B12 deficiency inhibits cell apoptosis that results in formation of macrocytes, which are red blood cells with MCV greater than 100. But also, disruption of cell apoptosis cause formation of hypersegmented neutrophils. In normal condition, neutrophils have nucleus with less than 5 lobes. But with disruption of DNA production, the quantity of lobes greatly increase and neutrophils that have more than 5 lobes we call hypersegmented. In addition to this, B12 deficiency causes demyelination of neurofibers. 
To explain this, recall that we require B12 for conversion of methylmalonyl K into succinyl K. So without vitamin B12, this conversion becomes impossible, and as a result methylmalonyl K accumulates. The concept is that myelin sheath is characterized by high proportion of lipids and consequently a low proportion of proteins. As any membrane, myelin also worn out, thereby it requires continuous reparation. And to substitute fatty acids that are damaged, fatty acid synthesis must to provide new fatty acids to replace the damaged ones. So fatty acid synthesis must to keep going. As we know, fatty acids are produced from acetyl K, and one of the intermediate metabolites in fatty acid synthesis is malonyl K. It turns out that methylmalonyl K can substitute malonyl K in fatty acid synthesis, and this results in production of a brain chain fatty acids that are not the normal structural components of myelin sheath. So this disrupts entire myelin structure and cause demyelination of neural cells. Demyelination of the brain neurons cause reversible dementia and memory deficit. Demyelination of the spinal cord usually occurs at the dorsal columns and cause loss of proprioception and loss of vibration sense. Basically, the signature manifestation is that patients will frequently fall during walking, simply due to the progressive loss of proprioception. So demyelination of the spinal cord cause loss of proprioception and vibration sense, and demyelination of the CNS cause reversible dementia. Also, vitamin B12 deficiency causes accumulation of homocysteine and methylmalonyl K in the blood. As you see, with absence of folate or with vitamin B12 deficiency, we cannot convert homocysteine into the methionin. As a result, homocysteine level will increase. And also, with absence of vitamin B12, we cannot convert methylmalonyl K into the succinyl K. As a result, methylmalonyl K will increase and the exact accumulation of these two substances can serve as a laboratory marker of vitamin B12 deficiency. But also, in addition to symptoms caused by vitamin B12 deficiency, there are symptoms caused by anemia itself. First of all, decrease in hemoglobin concentration will cause pale conjunctiva and pale skin. Because recall that blood has bright red color due to a hemoglobin with oxygen. The higher the hemoglobin level, the more intense and bright is the red color of the blood. So with decreasing amount of hemoglobin, the color of the blood becomes less bright and less intense. And when blood moves through the capillaries in the sites where capillary beds are visible, and it's typically conjunctiva, we can basically assess the color of the blood by the color of the conjunctiva. And if the level of hemoglobin in the blood is low, Obviously, the color of the blood becomes less intense and less bright, and conjunctiva in this case will be pale, and the same principle can be applied to the skin. Also, with decrease in hemoglobin, the amount of oxygen in the blood decreases, so a condition known as hypoxemia develops. Decrease in oxygen delivery to the brain causes hypoxia of the brain tissue that results in symptoms as headache and lightheadedness. Decrease in oxygen delivery to myocardial tissue causes myocardial ischemia, especially with pre-existing coronary artery disease. And myocardial ischemia causes angina symptoms, as retrosternal pain, for example. And also, most commonly, it manifests as shortness of breath initially with physical exercises, and then even at rest. Decrease in concentration of oxygen is immediately sensed by chemoreceptors. And in response to this, chemoreceptors increase the heart rate in order to increase oxygen delivery to peripheral tissues. So compensatory tachycardia develops. For treatment, we use vitamin B12 injections to compensate the deficiency. First of all, with normalization of vitamin B12, we increase the amount of free folate acid level, and thereby we correct anemia. Also, we normalize the level of homocysteine, and in addition to this, we make possible again the conversion of methylmalonyl K into the succinyl K. Thereby, the level of methylmalonyl K decreases, 
and because of this, demyelination decreases. So spinal cord and brain tissue neurons can be repaired. Once vitamin B12 deficiency is diagnosed, the infusions of vitamin B12 should be repeated during the entire lifetime. So basically, treatment lasts forever. But important that in case of vitamin B12 deficiency, we do not give folate acid. Because this intake of folate acid, we can correct DNA production and thereby we can correct megaloblastic anemia. But everything else requires vitamin B12. So homocysteine and methylmalonyl K will remain high. And which is by far more important, the myelination will progress, so neurological symptoms with time will be even more severe. So do not give folic acid to every patient with macrocytic anemia.